Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are advised that this video may contain images, voices and videos of deceased persons. Welcome! Well, we finally made it to Mungo National Park and we want to take you along there too. So sit back and relax and see what all the hype's about. Well, there's sheep on this side. <laughs> yeah, that's freaking wonder. Yeah. World Heritage. Wow, it's like we just moved to the moon. <laughs> Possibly. Or a very few. Yeah. Oh, there's one on camera over there. Yeah. I don't see any. No, there's no numbers, so yeah. Top. We've just arrived at Mungo and hopefully this is what we're gonna have tomorrow we've set up the tent carl's getting us a bevy carl's got one <laughs> and we've lit a fire so we've been here about 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love having such an awesome setup. And we bring our own firewood, yeah. so we don't have to go searching. And here, you're not allowed to collect firewood anyway. Honey, I've made dinner. And how have you made dinner? In the travel buddy. <laughs> Already done. We're having chow min. Awesome. They designed these with me in mind. No, that they're big enough. Yeah, that's awesome, hey? It is great. But most people don't bring enough wood to use the proper fire pit. <laughs> You're cute. You're cheeky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you like that one. You like muesli. <clears throat> what about Bran? Do you like Bran? <laughs> oh, you back. You heard about Apple? Bird disease. Hey? You could have mad bird disease. <laughs> Possibly. Are you going to come and steal my dinner tonight? Oh, yeah. I don't have any more sultanas. You ate them all. You ate my only piece of apricot. Ah, you know the cereal's there. How are you doing? You have very nice eyes. Oh. <laughs> That's his song. That talks like a blackbird. Yeah. That's not a bushy bird song, is it? I don't know. I guess it is. Oh! That's more like it, the Pied Butcher song. 
Well, at least he sings for his supper. We're going for a walk to the Mungo Lookout. I assume it just overlooks the Mungo Lake. Look at all these little friends that we're walking with. <laughs> How tame are they? Isn't it when it had water, or if it had water? She would have water at one time. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> This is the Mungo National Park main camping area. It all looks nice. The snake painted on the wall represents the carpet snake, who is the totem of the Muthi Muthi people. The snake is female and you can see her eggs are in the centre of her body. The snake is the creator of rainbows, which she forms by blowing into the sky. The painting represents the rainbow and the joy it brings. In 1968, Jim Bowler discovered Mungo Woman, eroding from a burial site in the Lunettes. His discovery proved Aboriginal culture was at least 26,000 years old. In 1974, fires swept through the Mallee country from the Murray River to Ivanhoe. The Barnes family watched the fires from the walls of China as it destroyed thousands of hectares of grazing country. Mungo became a world-renowned research site. In 1978, the Barnes sold Mungo Station and it was declared a national park. Another shearing shed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they did have power. Look at that piece of wood up there. And that one? Yeah. Wow. Gnarly. <laughs> I tried to straighten it out, didn't I? What have I got in here? It was run by a steam engine. Was it? Belt drive to where? Yep. Through there. Oh. The shearing things was run by a steam engine. Can you believe that? And that's their sharpening. It was run from there. Ooh. It's missing some bits. Because it was a big belt, went all the way up to there and back down. Oh wow. 
Okay. And another belt going from there to there. Very cool to see. So it's run by a steam engine, literally. That's pretty cool. To pump the water and to run the shears. Just like the sheep. This is the old Zancy homestead in the Mungo National Park. Used to be a soldier's settlement block apparently. And all that remains really is this dugout where they used to keep some of their meat and keep cool from uh, the summer heat. Looks pretty interesting. Duh. Like an underground bunker. Wow, look how much colder it is down here. It's cool. Huh. What was this for? For store their meat and stuff, and also to get out of the heat. Look at the, they just chopped the logs yeah, in half. Nice. Oh, a bit brighter out here. That's for sure. No tank. Oh, that's a fairly big one. Left to this old grader. Jeez, it's solid, but. Um, 
the original JLA orb. And BHP or Blue Scope Steel used to be owned by John Lysark. This is the old stable from the Zanke homestead. It used to have a, a grass roof. Straw. Old fences. Wow. They're big. No termites in the cypress, that's for sure. They must have pulled these logs from miles away. Look at them all. All cypress. Don't rot. Hardly at all. Incredible. Especially when you compare it to the hardwood fence next to it, it started to all perish. Stuff everywhere, just like a typical old farm. Engine. Expansion. I don't know what this is off. Not car guards, that's thick as. Something. I don't know what the hell this is. They're not wheels. Oh, aren't they? No, they're bolted on. Unless they skidded it along the ground, maybe. Looks like it was pulled behind something. Strange. Sometimes it burns, sometimes it hurts When well, you say my name, but thinking of hers I don't want to know, don't want you to go and leave me behind No, I don't want to see if it isn't me who's on your mind Away from home, I picked up my phone. I stared at your face, but it's not.
Hey everyone, we're at Mungo National Park in New South Wales visiting the Great Wall of China. So we will go over to the other side of the lake, which is about 10 kilometers across, and show you the sites over there. With a guide. We will have a guide and hopefully we can get a nice sunset tonight. We'll see you there. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Mungo is a very important place for the three custodians of this land. Now those three custodians are the Muddy Muddy tribe from the south of so, so Baranal area. The second lot are the Nyampa tribe from the east, we say Laka Jelly Co, Co Bar, I have no hay. And the third custodians are the Barkindji tribe, which stretches from Burt, follow the Darling River all the way down to Brentwood. So where you're standing, you're standing in Mungo Lakes. So 18,000 years ago was the last time these lakes were completely full. So where Red Colt Lookout is over to my far left, to the dunes you see over to my far right, looking about 30 35 kilometres wide. Where you just drove from to where you are now, 10 kilometres long. So you imagine 14 metres of fresh water in these lakes back in those days. So when these lakes used to fill, Mungo is part of Willandra Lakes and there are 12 lakes. And Mungo is the smallest lake and it's the highest lake. So when these lakes used to fill, the water used to come off the snowy mountains into the Lockham River, then from the Lockham River to the top of Willandra Lakes. These days, the water don't come down to you no more. So straight off the snowy, straight on the Lachlan, straight into the Murray. Now, in 1968, a gentleman by the name of Jim Bowler was walking up on these dunes and riding his motorbike and out around. Nobody knew who he was and what he was doing out here. Uh, he was an anthropologist with ANU, and he's actually seeing what the weather did to these lunettes. And when he came down off the dunes onto the lakes, he came across these remains, Mark those remains, and came back a year later and unearthed those remains today known as Mungo Lady. Now she was 18 years of age when she passed. So today she's about 45 to 50,000 years old. And she's the oldest human cremation in the world. And 500 metres away where he found Mungo Lady, came across these other remains, marked those and came back two days later and unearthed those remains today known as Mungo Man. Now he was in his 50s when he passed. So today he's 40 to 45,000 years old. And when he was uncovered, he was a full skeleton. And he had red oak from his head to his hip on his body today. So for Mungo Man to have red oak on his body, or bury with red oak, it was like a king. So he must have been a very important elder in his community for him to be very buried with red oak. That was more like um, gold, the most valuable material he ever had. So on the 17th of November 2017, Mungo Man was returned back to country with 104 other remains. Those 104 other remains, women and children, they're in about 20 to 30,000. So those other 100 and whatever, where did they come from? Or the how other were, lakes. And they were collected similarly? Yes, just, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. But, but Mungo is not an Aboriginal name. Mungo is a Scottish name. So two brothers that settled in the 1800s in the hometown of Scotland, there was a church called St Mungo, and you also got Mungo McCullough, the minister. All right, so from where Red Top Lookout is, just keep on these dunes all the way to the dunes, see over to my far left here. These are what are called the lunettes, the lunar of the moon. So that's where it's got its name from. Okay. So when you hear the words lunettes, all these peaks that you're seeing sticking out of the ground are your lunettes. All they are is just clay and salt, nothing else is in the moon. So we're going to head from here, work out to that platform, off the platform onto the dunes. So you're going to get to see things that the general public don't get to see. So this is the local sandstone from around Broken Hill, Wall Canyon, Mudderwinky National Park area. So this is from the Barkindji country from the west of us here. And the one behind the visitor centre is the Silk Creek sandstone, and that comes from around Kobar area, so from the east of here, from the Niamh tribe. This here is a moya for young lizard, James Wyman Taylor, was an Aboriginal guide for a local tool company called Harry Nunyan Tools. They no longer exist, they close their doors. Now, James is doing a sunset tour, so that's why we have the sunset down the bottom there. So he just finished doing his tour, stepped off the dunes on that platform and had a major heart attack. Could not be re-revived. He was only 37 years of age. 
So the reason why this rock was chosen is because of that natural part of the rock there. So that there represents Mungo Lakes where we're standing. Up here where it's shaded away, well that represents the wall of China. The bird you see is a wedge hole eagle. So that's from his father's country from the west of us here. And down the bottom there you've got a bilby, and that's from his mother's country from the east of us here. And the five hands you see here are the five family members you left behind. So how long have you been working with parks, clients? Oh, I've been here, well, five years this year in October. Okay. Here. About 15 years at Muddlewood National Park. Oh, so you've been around for a while then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The oldest layer of Mungo Lake you're looking at is that red soil in the middle. That's what's known as the gold gold layer. And that's 100 to 140,000 plus. And your fourth layer is the sand here, which is known as the Zanki layer. Mungo came well to Heritage Protection the same day as Uluru and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh. Any questions or anything? No, that's interesting. All right, we're going to open the gate up and we're going to head down. There obviously must be lots of other remains around there is, in the there area. Is. 2016, they found two remains of two young children. Yeah. They've been covered back over, never to be re researched. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. by universities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of these as you're walking around. So these are freshwater mussel shells from out of these lakes. So where we're standing, this is what's known as a mitten shell. So it's like a rubbish chip today. So after big rains and after big windstorms, mm. you'll come out here and you'll find stuff like this. So with the fish, they would have got the fish and they would cover it over clay, put it into the fire and put the ashes over top of it. And as the heat's getting to the clay, it's slowly cooking that fish. And once it cracks and dries, they'll take out the fire, let it cool down, and once it's cooled down, then they get rid of it, peel it open, takes away the scales and skin, just leaves your flesh of the fish. Now, same with your emu eggs, duck eggs, snake eggs, geese eggs, they wrap it in clay as well, put a hole in the eggs, and when that cooks, it releases that pressure. If you didn't put a hole in the egg, well, that expands flow, go everywhere. Mm. Set a teeth of a Tasmanian tiger. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, so Tasmanian tigers will still roam before Tasmania break away from the mainland. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we are still finding solar of things in that area. Wow. So as you're walking through, you will see a lot of bones scattered on the ground. And that's uh, one mm -hmm. of those shells. Sure is. The wind is terrible. So again, they would crush this up, mix with water. So when they do ceremonial dances at night time or someone's in the family's passed away, they would paint their bodies white. So like I mentioned, Mungo Man was buried with red ochre. Yellow ochre was used for females and white ochre was used for ceremonial initiation. So looking at 40, 45,000. Oh, no wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the sunset tour, where does that take people? Oh, okay. okay. Imagine the water running through here. Look at the tree made a right angle roof. Yeah. It's very clever. 
<laughs> oh, there's another runner. Time can never be your trusted friend or your sworn ally. No, it's the harshest mistress of all. And life is just a chain of moments spent a thousand hellos and goodbyes. Maybe a love like ours can leave out its call. Thanks for watching and don't forget to yep. subscribe. If you want to remind Thank us, you. click the bell. And remember, we always love a thumbs up. What are we getting up to in next week's episode? Shift and pull up the tides. Ne